integrate over a finite time horizon. So, there will be coefficients let us say x t and I want to integrate with respect to these 3 integrator and that is what Hudson Pathasarathy theory att attempts to do. So, with some certain class of nice properties of this you define these things. Now, the to remind you again a of t minus a s is equal to a, a of characteristic function of s to t. I will always take s to be less than equal to greater than equal to 0 and similarly for dagger lambda also the same thing lambda t minus lambda s is equal to the small lambda of the correct multiplication by the characteristic function of s to t. Okay. So, this all these things depend so they all live in these are non trivial or only in the sector h up to t beyond s in the decomposition that the Fox space decomposes h up to s tensor product h beyond s up to t and finally h beyond t. So, you have s here t here 0 here. So, h s sort of lives here these are not these are not subspaces these are components okay so this one lives here this one lives here and this one lives there okay they are different they are sort of decomposed into components and these increment these are clearly increments as you move from s to t this is the increment similarly for a dagger and for lambda. So, they are non trivial only in this part identity identity by non trivial I mean rest of it is identity. So, such things are called of independent increments. So, these are terminology is borrowed from probability theory, but we can ignore that these are processes of independent increment. Okay, they live in only on the incremental part of the component, but now let us introduce something which is a little different. And with that Hudson Pathasarathy theory was developed which I very quickly summarized with the help of slides last time many of you may have already studied it independently. <coughs> now, we want to add the gross Laplacian to this integration theory and subsequently solution of differential equation. How do we do it? So, for this Remember a gross Laplacian is because I want finally, I want to solve some class of differential equations constant coefficient coming from an initial Hilbert space. Okay. Just like you would like to solve constant coefficient ordinary differential equation a similar philosophy and gross Laplacian G is just for gross, but I put a k there okay, it depends on a certain operator in the base space. Okay. There are many Hilbert spaces around there is the initial Hilbert space there is the base space over which you have the exponential or fork where she used the terminology exponential I am using fork. 
and you must have noticed that the Hudson Pathasarathy equation if you would like to have unitarity I stated that theorem then you will have to have some relation between the coefficients they cannot be totally independent. So I forget what I used. I think something like that. And this G was this was the kind of differential equation that we wrote down which will have unitary solutions that we have stated already provided S is unitary. So here S is unitary L is a bounded operator in the initial space H self adjoint bounded then the solution is unitary etc and adapted regular process. So we would like to have the same property maintained that means we will be looking for unitary solutions and what is the structure you see well if S is there if I put S equal to identity this part will disappear and this will become just minus L but for unitarity you must have both DA and DA dagger okay. So similarly here I will need both gross Laplacian as well as its adjoint okay that is a natural thing to expect. So in order that I have an adjoint so I have to add its adjoint as well and this I have remarked for that K has to be Hilbert Schmidt in the base space. So we might as well start with that hypothesis right away. But now we want to get to the process level that means I have to do something like this. So I have to cho I have cho chosen the so base Hilbert space has been chosen to be L2 of R plus in order to do integration theory okay. So when you choose base space to be L2 of R plus what kind of objects will come as Hilbert Schmidt operator. And not only that there has to be certain amount of adaptedness by that I mean with respect to this kind of factorization this delta should behave in a certain fashion okay. So we have to ensure that and for that we have to do this let kappa be kappa be a map from R plus. So it is a two variable function of two variable complex valued function of two variable which is symmetric with respect to the two inter interchange of two variable locally square integrable function. So here locally square integrable with respect to in two time in the quadrant. two variable locally square integral okay. symmetric and for this given kernel you defined a family of Hilbert Schmidt operators indexed by T locally Hilbert Schmidt actually no Hilbert Schmidt correct sorry this is S. So you have the characteristic function from 0 to T pre multiplying it and then it is an integral operator so kappa is this cardinal I had chosen it is a symmetric locally square integral function given that kappa I, dis, I define this integral operator in the L2 space so here f is in the base space okay. 
okay so you can see easily the right hand side is well defined so for every t kt is hilbert in other words kt is an integral operator with with kernel given by chi 0 t and k kappa and another chi 0 t in the other side so kt is integral operator with kernel kappa in the middle and chi 0 t here chi 0 t there it is obviously square integrable therefore it defines an hilbert schmidt operator for every t so i have this indexed family of hilbert schmidt operator and therefore i get and this is what i will call delta g of t is nothing but delta g of kt so this is fixed by a choice of one kappa you can allow a kappa to be just about anything subject to these mild restrictions and therefore of course delta g dagger t is also is well defined okay in fact i will even simplify the notation i will drop the g and just leave the kappa here this is kappa to avoid too much writing just it depends on the kappa and t and in fact you can write down explicitly this expression this is by taking the definition of kappa i mean definition of kt uh, this is kappa ss prime because of symmetry this factor 2 comes and similarly dagger so the main thing is that this is quadratic in a but not at the same point notice and i am avoiding s prime being equal to s by choosing a kernel i am keeping them apart that that essentially that's all that is being done so these things are well defined so these so it is an so delta g this family is an adapted regular process that is clear once you look at this expression it is clear it is adapted regular process but is not independent increment like the other two other three it lives adapted means with respect to that factorization it leaves so delta kt lives here delta kappa t lives there for every t but if you take the increment so what happens to the increment delta kappa t minus delta kappa 
let us say S. Let us say alpha, I have to put another variable kappa alpha beta a d alpha a d beta that is what it is ok. So, you see you cannot make it live only in the sector s to t it, it carries all the information from 0 to t. So, this is is not trivial by not trivial I mean not an identity in H uh, up to S. S is less than T. So, here 0 S T all those three lived here that is they were trivial here and here, but this one is not this one is not trivial here it is still trivial there namely identity, but it is not identity in 0 to s. So, that is the difference. So, that is what is expressed by saying it is not of independent increment. Nevertheless, it has some nice property like this one. Why this one is more takes more strength than the other one? This is harder, very tight. There is another property which I think Vershik also mentioned in another context, namely the so called Martingale property. The word has come from probability theory, actually from gambling. Martingale essentially means that if you are gambling, it is a, I mean, those kinds of gambling where in the long run you will always break even. I mean, neither you will finally lose nor the bank loses. So, everything is even, no one loses. I do not know why one should gamble then ok. So, this means the following that if I take, so consider very special vectors so let us say I have a vector I should not use u maybe f of to s tensor vacuum vacuum I always will write this way because f is 0 if the vector in the base space is 0 then it you can easily see by the definition of the exponential vector it will have 1 in the 0th component and 0 in all the rest of the places ok that is called the vacuum vector, but for short I will write this e of 0 and I will put a s here means I have f sitting here 0 to s and 0 rest of the places ok. So, I take the characteristic function of 0 to s that will automatically make 0 here ok. So, I take this f of course, I mean is another f, but I could have taken so, this is just an f in L 2 of R plus which I chop off by the characteristic function up to s and 0 rest of the thing. Take any of these, so for example, a t ok and take g up to s and consider this inner product. So, f and g are two L 2 functions over the right half line which I chop off up to s and put 0 exponential of 0 in the rest of the part of the L 2. You can compute it you can easily see this is equal to
for every s less than t. That means the expectation, this is a kind of an expectation, gives you back the same object at s at the previous time. Okay. Such a property is called a Martingale property. And you can verify, it's an again a trivial calculation, same for A dagger and same for lambda as well. All three satisfies this so called Martingale property. And so does Gross Laplacian. That is also quite elementary. I think you just look at that expression that I gave somewhere here. No, somewhere else I gave it. Where is it? Did I wipe it? No, uh, oh, here. Yeah, look at that, that expression. Twice the double integral. You take that expression, apply, find the expectation value with vectors like this, okay, for t greater than s. So, this is also true for delta kappa. T as well. So, these are now that we have four martingales, out of which three are of independent increment, one is not. Okay. So, that is the distinct feature of the Gross Laplacian. But now let us do like Hutton Path Sarathi, we had this differential equation which we talked about last time and with those choices of coefficients. So, for to write Hudson path sarathi equation, as I said, you have to introduce another Hilbert space, which I call the initial Hilbert space. So, what do you have? You have the structure is that of the Fox space, which gamma over H and H is L2 of R plus for integration theory. Okay. So, H0 is another Hilbert space where these coefficient operators live. So, this is like constant coefficient differential equation, okay. operator coefficient. So, here also same kind of thing. So, first of course, you will have to do the integration theory and that can be done. So, this I would like you to verify the Martingale property for delta k that is the as well as delta k dagger I should have mentioned. You can easily see once you have done it for delta k, delta k dagger is just the complex conjugation of the previous calculation. So, if it is true for delta k, it will be true for delta k dagger. Now, another thing I want to mention relative to this equation in hudson pathasarathy calculus is the expectation value. So, you have a process x t, where does it live? It is unitary for those choices of coefficient in a 0 tensor fog. So, it is unitary in a very big space. I want to remove this dependence. I want to see what how it behaves like after removing this as operator in the initial Hilbert space. To do that, we do what the following so called we take partial trace. So, take partial trace with respect to this operator the vacuum in gamma h, okay, which means the following. Look at, so for take any vector, any pair of vectors in the initial Hilbert space H naught, look at U tensor E naught, X T 
V tensor E naught and take inner product. Take the solution of the differential equation, put it between these two special vectors, U and V are arbitrary, but this one is special, namely the vacuum. This is called vacuum expectation. Now, instead of computing this, use the differential of that. So, I have the differential equation, so you can easily compute. There is the differential equation on the bottom part of the top board, namely this one. Remember L, S, etc. are all, all constant coefficient, they have nothing to do with the Fox space, they are living in the initial space. So, what will happen? First one, you will have an X and then you have L D A dagger, okay. I just wrote the first one in this side. Now notice this thing commutes with L. L is living in H naught, D A D A dagger is living in the Fox space. So they are two different tensor components, therefore they will commute. So first bring L here, okay. Then look at these two. Now the solution I have stated is an adapted regular process. Adapted means X of T lives in the space, Fox space, I mean H0 tensor. So X, the solution X is adapted which means lives in a non-trivial in or maybe I can even write that it is something tensor identity. So, this is in H up to T and this is in H beyond T, okay. Adapted means that. So, imagine this X to be of that form, D A dagger lives to the right of T and that is exactly the, uh, the way we have defined the integration. It is for that reason that we have defined the integration by taking the value of the integrand at the left end point and integrator to the right, okay, so that they commute. So, D A dagger will commute through and this will come here as D A adjoint and this will kill this vacuum. So, this will be 0. So, first term is 0, second term is also 0 for the same reason and third term is also 0. It will leave only the last term as non-zero. Therefore, this will be minus half, sorry x is there, L star L plus I H dt, I can take the dt outside, V tensor E0 dt, that is the only surviving term. But this is an operator which acts only in the initial space H naught. Therefore, you can write this whole thing as U tensor E naught XT for simplicity of writing let me call it G. So, this G acts only on V, okay. So, it makes the vector GV tensor vacuum, okay. And what is this? This is essentially kind of thing that you started from except V has been replaced by G, G V. That means if I call this, let me say T T U V, so I have taken differential of, so this object this is called the partial trace with respect to this vector, distinguished vector. I call it U T T V. So, the, it defines an operator family T T in the initial Hilbert space, which satisfies this differential equation, which means D of T T is equal to T T G V, I mean T T G as operator equation. And there is a D T somewhere. So, I 
So, that gives you this operator equation. Okay. G is a bounded operator in this instance. Therefore, I can solve this easily given my initial value. So, I have to put an initial value which I did not. So, I have to make an initial value problem and take it as identity. Take it as identity, it starts from identity. Then T0 also will be the identity in, of course, the initial space. TT is an operator family in initial space. So, you have an initial value problem in the initial space, okay, which is trivial to solve because G is bounded. So, TT If G is not bounded, it is a highly non-trivial problem. We won't go into that. So now we want to do something similar exercise for the equation containing delta k as well. Okay. So let me do that. this day. So, I will write down a differential equation of that type with, so I will give a very special case, it will not go look at the general one, it does not make sense. Okay. So, look at the following differential equation. So, there will be lots of coefficients of course. So, here is the So, we will be considering differential equation of this type, where x j, j from 1, 2, etcetera up to x 5 are in B of H naught, but W is very different, right. W spills over into the Fox space, unlike the Hudson Patasarathy. So, W looks like this. So, that is what I mean that this is spilling over into the Fox space. It is no more an operator in the initial space like the previous, like the Hudson Patasarathy uh, case. In fact, I should have called it 9 because these are again constant coefficients in the initial space, but there are additional things sitting here which are not in the initial space. So, bar means complex conjugation that is the standard, uh, I got it right, yeah, something like that, yeah. So, these are all constant coefficient, but by that I mean bounded operators in the initial Hilbert space. But unlike Hudson Patasarathy, where these were absent, okay, only there was something in the initial Hilbert space. Here now you have in a natural way, the DT term contains parts from the Fox space. But nevertheless, it does not really and uh, so what is the unitarity condition? So, this is the condition. So, X, all these are bounded operators, then you can prove that this, this such an equation has a unique solution. Okay, That is the first step. 
Next step is under what further condition that solution is unitary, that is the next natural question. And let me give you the answer. So again, I will avoid giving the most general answer. It is, a, I mean, obviously, as you can see, there are nine coefficients. So there will be a long list of interrelation between them. I will give a special subcase of that. So let us look at the following differential equation with some special choices of the x1 to x9. where z, so z has a first part which is the hudson patasarathy type which will come from just the coefficients of a and a dagger plus a self adjoint piece which always hangs around which is not determined by the equations. But now there will be many more extra objects. Oh, what happened? Oh, this is a yeah. With these choices where you see that f, s and l appear in the equation. Now z contains this new operator which is self adjoint. So h and j are bounded self adjoint operators in the base space. g is just bounded. Okay. Then this has a unique, okay. I have to give the initial value as usual. Y at 0 is identity. Then this equation has a unique unitary adapted solution. It is of interest to look at it and uh, see that if L is 0, for example, that means there is no DA DA dagger in the equation. And let us take G to be 0 as well. G does not appear here. So G is a coefficient which is undetermined like H okay, from the equation. But if g is 0, then these two terms also disappear. Okay. You will are left with only this term. So let us now take, as we did for the last time, last case, let us take the vacuum expectation as we did in the last case. So, here 
yeah so if i take vacuum expectation so that is as before take okay this is not a vector in the, in the base space this is a vector in the fox space up to s and vacuum beyond s like i did in the hp type of calculation no i don't want to do that sorry what i want to do is to take this the partial trace with respect to the vacuum so i am putting the vacuum on the whole fox space u and v are the initial space and i have that differential equation so i compute the differential of that and that will give me that huge thing let us just go through it so let's look at the first one so this one so main thing is this one so this will commute through this these are constant coefficients so they don't really matter i can put them here what it does with this okay now look at do i have it still there yes there it is so what is differential of delta kappa t that is equal to there are some factors and scalars I'll put a t here, t. So this a d t will commute with y. Sorry, there is a dagger here. I'm looking at dagger. That is the. Okay, so I'll have the dagger. So a this part, this is scalar. this part will commute with y because y is adapted and will get will annihilate the vacuum by flipping on the other side okay so this part will not contribute and look at f delta k and that is easier dt because that is there it is so there are two a's and they will go right through and hit the vacuum on the right side and annihilate so that also will not contribute and the rest are already you have discussed they will not contribute except for the last term so let us concentrate on the last term namely z dt okay z is there it is a long expression but you can have a look at it and see hey i have made a mistake here somewhere a dagger should have been there yeah one of them one of these two is a dagger i think this one k bar dagger yeah okay so now look at this expression with that z brought in here first one remains as it is because this is an operator in the initial space has nothing to do with the fox space what happens to this one you have this operator which is an annihilation operator on the right 
that lives in Fox space entirely. So that will come and kill this. Okay. So that will not contribute. And similarly, this one. Similarly, this one. No, sorry. This one may not go through because it is dagger. I have to bring it over to the left side, which it may not go through with the Y. Okay, it will get stuck. So for that, we would like to put G equal to 0. Though the solution is unitary, I am not able to compute the vacuum expectation. In order to able to compute the vacuum expectation, I put G 0. G is just an undetermined coefficient, remember. If I put G equal to 0, then this term disappears. And I am left with this. So let me write that only. So minus 2 f f star plus i j a kappa t a kappa bar dagger t Okay. Now, this one as it sits is not vanishing, but I use the commutation relation a a dagger. So, this is equal to a kappa bar t dagger a kappa t plus. Remember a a a dagger commutation relation I use, which so here you will get a function gamma k t times identity on the Fox space. Okay. And this one gets wiped out by the vacuum because now it is on the right side. Therefore, what do you get? So, E0 disappears once this has been annihilated, you are left with a scalar there and this operator. where gamma k t is equal to integral, it comes from this inner product k u v, sorry, u v I should not use, s s prime square d a, sorry, t s d s 0 to t. It, it depends on the kappa that we started while with the for defining the gross Laplacian process. So, that tells you what? So, I, I wiped that, so, but that part is also there. I, just did not write it because that is already known. So, that will stay. So, I can write it as this plus that the Hudson Patasarathi type term okay, that will be the final expression with both in it. Now you can see the impact of the fact that gross Laplacian is not a process of independent increment. So, can I integrate this equation? In other words, now I have, so if I call this TT now, as we did for Hudson Patasarathi, what we will get? We will get this following operator equation.
So, that is the equation in the initial space. So, this is an equation in H naught and if we had used the initial value identity, this will also have the initial value identity. Okay. So, what is the solution? It is quite trivial. The solution, well it is trivial, I would not write it, it is because, okay. What is the solution? One can actually write down because it is all constant coefficient, it is exponential of the integral of 0 to t. Actually, strictly speaking, it is one should not write it like this, one should write it s to t if s is less than t. Okay, let me write it, then you will see it. It is e to the power integral s to t of let me call this something say z1 this is z2 so these are two operators in the base everything is in base space so z1 plus z2 gamma k uh, alpha d alpha so that is the solution so, unlike the previous case when Z2 was absent, this will become, so if Z2 is 0, that is the case when gross Laplacian was not there in the differential equation, that will give you e to the power Z1 T minus S. So, the, in other words, in general the solution is not a semi group. but an evolution evolution means that you go from take three time points r less than s less than t then t r s I do not know which way is this side or that side. When a family depending on two ordered variables satisfy that equation that is called an evolution equation. You go from R to S, S to T. Okay. You need, it is dependent on two points in time. So, this is the evolution, property of evolution. And when the evolution is homogeneous, time homogeneous, that means if the evolution T S T depend only on T minus S, then it is automatically a semi group. Okay. So, a homogeneous evolution is always a semi group. So, he, unlike Hutchison Pathasarathy case, when the evolution is homogeneous, here it is not. Okay. because of the presence of this gamma k, gamma kappa. Okay. Now, let us as the last bit, let us look at some sp one special gamma, special kappa, just to give you an idea of how it can, it may look like. And lack of homogeneity is entirely due to the fact that gross Laplacian is not a process of independent increment. Okay. Though it is a martingale, it is not of independent increment. So, let us say kappa to be equal to 1, that is the simplest case that you can think of. In that case, gamma kappa of t is t. I think it must be there somewhere in the board or did I wipe it? Maybe I wiped it. Gamma kappa t was 
integral 0 to t kappa t s square d s okay. Then this evolution is truly an evolution. Oh, sorry, alpha, yeah. That is just the integration variable that is all. Okay, that that is what is the evolution like. Uh, no, actually, I am sorry, I made a mistake here. This is not true. This expression is not true, but the solution is an evolution, it exists and is an evolution and not a semi group. You cannot write an expression for it because they do not commute, you see that is why. So, this is also wrong. So, I just will use the fact that it is exists and is not an evolution, not in a semi group. But essentially, what you will see is that if ah, then it is okay, correct. And if let us take a still more special case, I contrive such that z1 is 0. That means in the equation I put L equal to 0 and this undetermined h also to be 0. So, that I have the Hudson path part is non existent. Then I can write an expression of course, this is equal to the power t square by 2 minus s square by 2 times z2. Where z2 is uh, I think I yeah here. So it is some kind of a quadratic evolution for that special case. Otherwise, it could be more general, of course. And if j is zero, so this is a some kind of a contractive quadratic evolution. It is not a semi-group. Okay. So essentially, that uh, and it seems that uh, this is the best you can do in the Fox space. You can't go any farther. By that, what I mean? This is something physicists considered probably maybe 50s, maybe 50s. Yes, I think 50s. That long back. This is a quadratic thing in uh, a a dagger. So we have three kinds of things. One is a dagger. Well, actually, you know, there is a very subtle thing a dagger i a dagger j a j plus some alpha i j let us say this is your lambda alpha ok. You are given certain class of uh, numbers I mean these are complex numbers if they satisfy some simple property then this is a well defined operator even if it is uh, for even if alpha is just the Kronecker delta that is the most canonical one then you get Okay, this is the number operator. This is very well known and it is, it is rather well behaved. Okay. Next one is that is what Gross Laplacian tries to do. This is more singular, okay. but still not so bad. It lives in Fox space quite easily, but it is adjoint may not live in Fox space unless you put some that strong condition on alpha ij. So, singularity is already appearing if you want it is adjoint to also live in Fox space. But the next one is I mean I do not know some notation has to be given uh, i j k it depends on three indices. And it is so you, you, you can take one of them to be dagger. In other words, if you have a order 3 in the creation annihilation operator, then you face real trouble. You cannot accommodate in Fox space. 
So ultimately, if physics is considered all polynomials in AI AI dagger, but you cannot accommodate it in Fox space. Up to quadratic, one is able to accommodate it in Fox space. Beyond that, you have to leave the Fox space. Okay. They commute anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Here it matters. Here the order matters, but there it won't matter. So the study of polynomials of the creation and annihilation operator is a is a or was an industry, and uh, in order to go beyond quadratic, you will have to go into what is called white noise theory. Okay. So the, I won't obviously do that. That means essentially you have to you have to leave Fox space. You have to go to the space of distributions, and uh, that means your exponential, in some sense, you will consider a Fock-like structure, but not over a Hilbert space, but over distribution space of distributions. So things become more singular, okay? and that's where these, uh, particularly this the dagger of it, which is always worse behaved than the operator itself. You see that the, the adjoint is always worse behaved. For example, even annihilation operator, as I said, annihilation operator is very nicely behaved, but creation is not, it is adjoint. It is worse behaved. So, annihilation operator polynomial is well defined in Fox space, no problem, but its adjoint is not going to be well defined. In fact, you cannot find any vector for its adjoint if you go beyond some powers. Okay. So, you will have to leave the Fox space. That is all. So, this uh, well, this is something which we did very recently, that adding the, uh, the, the quadratic uh, into the HP type calculus and as it turns out, everything works more or less all right, but only for bounded coefficients. For unbounded coefficients, even hudson patasarathy theory is rather difficult to say the least, uh, but there are some results or many results, but thank you. They have been floored. <laughs>